Okay, so inside this Raspad 3 tablet, there is an Orange Pi, and this is the first one they've ever sent me with a RISC-V processor. So this is an open source, eight core RISC-V processor, and this is the Orange Pi RV2. Let's just have a quick look at Ubuntu, just to show you that it's all working. So we've got files, we've got the web browser here. I'm connected to Wi-Fi. The keyboard doesn't come up at the moment, so what I have to do is plug in a mouse keyboard. And then I could do a search for BBC Sport. Let's go for this one. There we go. So if I shut this down, I'll show you what it looks like inside. So I've got to remember to unplug this, otherwise it doesn't come apart. I haven't put any screws in it yet because it doesn't quite close. I could definitely adapt it to be able to close, uh, but uh, this was just a test to see if it works really. And on the Raspad, if we press and hold here, that will properly shut the device down. But this is all being powered by the battery that's in the Raspad. So 3200 milliamp, 35.52 watt hour. 11.1 volt but this device works on a normal 5 volt USB-C this steps it down to 5 volt and you can see the cables I used uh, well this is an original cable but without these two bits I just needed to make it a bit longer so that's a USB-A to A then I had a full-size HDMI to micro HDMI. It's a bit longer than you'd want in here, but it fits. And then this cable comes with the Raspad, which is a USB-C to C. And because the screw holes are in a slightly different position to a Raspberry Pi, which is what this is designed for, I've just got one screw in there, which is this one. So now I can take this out, and you can see that on the base of it, it's got an NVMe, and that's what the operating system is running from. I'm going to plug it into a monitor now so I can use screen capture with it. So I'll put in the corner of the screen the power consumption. I'm using my little Tapo plug to be able to show that it's currently 3 watts of power. Uh, and let's just use it as a computer. It's definitely not as fast as a Raspberry Pi 4 even. I was using it on an SD card. I'm now using it on the NVMe drive. So if we call up the terminal just to show how well it works. So sudo at install neofetch and the password as standard is orange pie. And if you're used to using Linux, you'll see how, how this is running. So not super fast, but the big thing about this is the open source and also what, what things will happen in the future because not everything works with it, because not everything is designed for this architecture. So a lot of things are designed for x86 or ARM. Let's do the same, but we'll do it with P sensor. So we can see what the temperature's like, because I'm not using a fan on this. I've just plugged it in. It just sat on my desk. Okay, so both of those are in. So if I type in P sensor, that will run. And we can have a look at how well that's doing. Now if I, how do you minimize on this? Hide. If we open another terminal and I'll run NeoFetch. So you can see Orange Pi 1.0.0 RISC 5 64 bit, kernel 6.6.63 and this device has got 8 gig of RAM and it's an 8 core 1.6 gigahertz. So if I press the Windows key and we can show all the apps that are running and if I tap on the dots here we can see what else we've got installed. So at first I didn't see the file manager on there uh, because it doesn't show up in here although it is down on the taskbar here but I thought that I had to use Midnight Commander which is uh, like a sort of DOS based file system but you don't have to use that. There is, uh, if I press the Windows key, a files app installed. So we've also got HTOP in here. If we go back, let's just get several things running because we've got plenty of RAM, which is good. Uh, media player, although I haven't got any any media on there at the moment. 
Uh, Orange Pi config is interesting. So we've got very similar to what you get on a Raspberry Pi, although a bit more basic because obviously it's in its early days. But it's nice to see all these things are already here with these risk-based processors. So system and security. So we can do CPU speed and governor. And you can see how we can go for performance, for instance. Announce system in network. We've got hardware configuration so we can enable things here. SSH. So if you want to remotely access it. So we can update the system. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, and then we have the desktop, so how you want to log in. And we've got our regional settings software. So you can install different bits of software from here, which I thought was interesting. So monitoring, benchmark, diagnostics, remote desktop. So Thunderbird email, GIMP for photo manipulation. That might be worth putting on here. Uh, we've also got LibreOffice as well, Full Suite or Writer. Well, let's go with GIMP and also Writer. And that's working in the background. While it's doing that, let's go back to the browser, which is where... Oh, I haven't got the browser running, so let's launch the browser. And we'll do a search for the Orange Pie website. You can see the, the browser isn't quite right. Like you're using an unsupported command line flag. And so this isn't how Google usually looks uh, or Chromium usually looks. But let's go with it anyway, because it is, it is working. But this is the first iteration of this software. So if we go to hardware and let's try and find, yeah, here it is, more info. And if we go to download, just to see if anything else has been added, there was two bits of software. Yeah, so OpenWRT, which is uh, like router software, and this Ubuntu image. So this is what I've downloaded. And you just click on it. It opens up a Google Drive link, and you can download it. I unzipped it on a Raspberry Pi, so just right-click and unpack it. And I wrote the image with Raspberry Pi Imager, so it should work fine with Belena Etcher and all sorts of other ways. And the nice thing about it is there's just one image, so this is a desktop image and a server image, but the, the desktop image, I wrote it to an SD card, worked absolutely fine. Wrote it to a NVMe drive, worked absolutely fine. So there was no messing around with the boot or downloading specific software to write the image, which Rockchips, which is a much more powerful ARM-based processor, really, really good, love it, but the writing to it and using different storage mediums is a bit of a pain. Uh, right, so let's go back to that page. And I haven't found that with RISC-5. Uh, at this stage, it's it's been very much like a Raspberry Pi to just write the image and boot it and I haven't really thought about it much. Um, I do have a 256 gig EMMC drive, but the NVMe is going to be better performance, so that's what I'm using instead. So if we look at official tools, because this is where on the rock chip devices you'd add you'd add loads and loads of different things. Cross compilation tool chain, Linux image. Yeah, so Belena Etcher they're recommending for Linux SD card. Yeah, that's just formatting the SD card. Win32 disk images, so again just standard software. Yeah, so it doesn't look like there's loads of extra specialist things to, to get it up and running with, which is nice. And there is a user manual, which I haven't actually looked at yet. I haven't needed to. So it's a PDF file. I thought it was going to be one sheet then. No, it is loading. Oh, 185 sheets. Crikey. Yeah, looks pretty thorough. So let's go back to the specs. So 8-core Risk Five with two tops of AI power, which isn't a lot, but it's nice to see it there. So the KYX1 process, so you can see nice and close up. 26-pin GPIOs. I haven't put a fan on yet, but I probably will connect to... So we've got the 3.3 volt, if it's if it's the same as a Raspberry Pi, and the 5 volt and the negative. So I'm just going to connect a fan up, just so that it's not going to have to thermal throttle. Although, what were the temperatures like? So if we go back, uh, and P sensor, so... We have got up to 78 degrees, and it's not like I've been working it. So, I mean, there's quite a lot running, uh, as you can see here, but nothing too strenuous, I would say. So, like most single board computers, it's advisable to have a fan or a heat sink at least. So, support for DeepSeek, 
You can get it in two gig, four gig, or eight gig, and it's LP DDR four X. I saw some other things in videos. It's not really worth having DDR five because the processor isn't powerful enough to really exploit it. Is what I, I read. Two M.2 slots. So there's one here on the top. I did try and boot the operating system from this M.2 slot. It doesn't run the operating system from it, unless you can adjust it with the boot. Obviously there's a big menu I could have a look through there. So Wi-Fi 5.0 and Bluetooth 5.0. I was using it on Wi-Fi with a tablet earlier on. Seemed to be good. It's got a little antenna with it and uh, yeah, it seems to pick up pretty well. Two gigabit LAN ports three USB 3 and two USB 2, so nice connectivity there. No USB-C video output, because the only USB-C socket is the, the power one. Uh, sports dual screen, heterodyne display, type C USB power supply, purpose computing power to support rapid deployment of AI model algorithms. It says EMC up to a 128 gig, but they, they have sent me a 256 gig. Nice to see a three and a half mil headphone socket on there. And it's PCIe 2.0, is the speed, so not fast PCIe slot. But they do talk about the installation of NVMe SSDs, so whether or not you can use both for an NVMe drive. I suppose I could put one in as an extra storage device and see if that works. Yes, it does. I've just plugged in another NVMe drive into the slot on the top, so the 2230 slot, and it's detected this is a Raspberry Pi operating system, and it's still booted from Ubuntu. So yeah, both slots work with NVMe drives. So the dimensions are on here. NAS, commercial electronics, smart robotics, smart home, industrial control, edge computing, and so on. Uh, both Jeff Gilling and Explaining Computers have done some really informative videos on RISC-V, if you want to have a look at that. I thought I'd just cover the hardware more than go in the sort of merits of RISC-V. Single core CPU arithmetic is more than 130% of ARM A oh, A55, so the older one. So it says power consumption in the same scenario is only 80% of that of ARM A55. It is still showing 3 watts, which is very low power. That's impressive. So we've got display connections, camera connections. 5 volt, 5 amp, that's interesting. So like the Raspberry Pi 5, normally you can only go 5 volt, 3 amp, but people are adapting to that, so you're seeing more 5 volt, 5 amp. Bluetooth low energy, the pin connection, so yeah, it is the 3.3 volt or 5 volts. So I use 3.3 volt just because the fan runs slower and if it's if it's cooling enough it just means it's a lot quieter. But you can use 5 volt if you want more power. So where are these extra displays coming from then? Cam 1, Cam 2. You've got a couple of extra keys here that are reset and a boot key and also a power key on the front. Real time clock connector. And underneath this is where the EMMC connects to but usually you find that that takes over everything else so I tend to leave it disconnected. Obviously if you're going to use it in machinery or equipment and you want super reliability, very low power, EMMC is great for that. Ah, so this is a display connector, look, LCD. So currently using four watts, what happens if we start playing video? So let's see, YouTube, you see it looks, it just looks odd, the browser. I haven't tried to install any other browsers yet. Maybe Firefox works better with this or is more supported. It's not loading up particularly fast as you can see and I've got this connected to ethernet. I had to cut that out because it took a while. So let's try one of my videos, and I'll leave this bit in real time as to how quick it starts up playing the video. So loading up, let's click on that, and it's started to play. Not sure where the audio is going at the moment. I have got a USB sound card plugged in there at the moment. So where is it going? So HDMI audio. So you'll probably hear the audio. So I'm going to mute the sound. go for 1080 and full screen and let's see what it does on that. You see immediately looked much sharper but it's struggling with a catch up. Well, that doesn't, yeah that doesn't look too bad. 93 drops. Uh, it doesn't seem to be going up though and it's picked 1836 by 1033 but uh, it's playing 1080 alright. So the video side of it seems to be pretty reasonable. Oh, we've, got, we've got to go for 4K while we're here. Which is always something that the Raspberry Pi has kind of stumbled on on different times. But the 
operating system definitely feels slower than, than a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, and way, way slower than a Raspberry Pi 5, which uh, you know, has that faster NVMe connection and a much faster processor. So, it's playing. Okay, video. so video is pretty decent because that's not dropping many frames at 4K. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, okay, I shouldn't have said anything. I looked like it was coping with it. What are we looking at for temperature? Because I wonder if it's thermal throttling. Yeah, look, 87 degrees. I think it's probably thermal throttling. CPU usage is 90%. So let's put a fan on it, because I think it needs it. Okay, so I've added a fan. I've connected it to the five volt GPIO pins. And as you can see, I've just used a bit of metal that I had lying around but I'm forcing the air down onto the CPU and it's definitely making a difference. So I've had this running for a while now and the temperature is nice and cool at 60 degrees. I haven't tried 4K yet. Okay, let's try 4K again and see how it gets on. Looks pretty good, doesn't seem to be dropping any frames. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. I wasn't expecting that on this device. So yeah, video playback is actually pretty good. It's dropped one frame out of coming up to a thousand. Yeah, so one frame out of a thousand. So if we quit out of that. Let's just have a look at where the temperature is. Yeah, so with that fan, that made all the difference. So it was thermal throttling before. I did find this article for DF Robot Selection Guide of Linux Systems compatible with RISC-5. And you can see we've got Ubuntu, which obviously I'm running here. And then we've got Debian, Fedora, OpenSUSE, FreeBSD, and OpenBSD. And this story came up because I've been searching for RISC-V. Felix86 is an x86-64 emulator for RISC-V hardware. And I think this is what Jeff Gearding showed in his video. So similar to Box64, except it targets specifically RISC-V hardware. Project is very new, but it can already run some Linux games like World of Goo, Super Tux Car, and Quake Open Arena. And in the Explaining Computers video, the amount of risk processors in various devices like graphics cards and things like that was really interesting. So thanks very much to Orange Pie for sending me this to test. Hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.